welcome everybody to this uh, webinar. And today we're going to talk about cybersecurity and how it impacts supply chain. And um, my, as, as Monica said, my co-founder, uh, co-owner of CMIT Solutions and also instructor of this new course coming up. A little bit about my background. Um, I've lived in this area for over 25 years with uh, my husband, Todd Welke, who's my business partner as well, and two grown children now. My background is in computer science, so I've worked for over 25 years building software as software engineer, software uh, executive in this uh, Fortune 500 company. Uh, started a company in 2009 and have, the in the last 12 years, worked with a lot of companies dealing with uh, uh, in the supply chain, dealing with cybersecurity issues and implementing cybersecurity. So uh, I've been pretty active in cybersecurity, helping uh, a lot of companies uh, assessing, implementing, uh, bringing awareness, training and all of that. And I am a certified registered practitioner uh, by a certification body called SCMMCAB. And I'll talk a little more about that later. And I'm also on the board of two uh, nonprofit organizations that help small businesses um, uh, in the area. So uh, today's topic is uh, how does cybersecurity affect the supply chain? And, on, on, and throughout the webinar today, I'll touch on the class and, and what is gonna be covered more in the class. Um, so, Monica mentioned what, uh, who this is for. Uh, it really is for everybody because it doesn't matter what you do now, you have to deal with cybersecurity issue. Uh, in the supply chain area, if you are a uh, uh, procurement or supply chain professional, whether it's in public or private sector, commercial enterprise professional, accounting, finance, uh, you're dealing with contract negotiation, uh, software engineers, uh, uh, especially uh, the ones that are building software, security is, is something you build in. It, it's not something that you uh, figure out at the end. Um, and people that are interested in the growing field of cybersecurity professionals. So these are all uh, uh, audience uh, for this webinar. So how does cybersecurity impact supply chain? Supply chain, I... It, involve everybody that are in the, in the supply chain. And, and, and with that, let's, let's look at what supply chain is. So from product idea, product conception to uh, all the way to manufacturing, to getting to the store, getting to the consumer, there are a lot of suppliers in these supply chains. And as you can see on the bottom of the chart, Nowadays, information, data, uh, documents are flowing all over the place, back and forth in all these different elements. So it doesn't matter what elements you are in the supply chain, whether you're management uh, in the planning product procurement, on the day-to-day -day basis, you deal with data, you deal with, you deal with document, you deal with requirements, invoicing, uh, payment, all of those are, are now digital uh, data. Um, and all it takes, all it takes is just one weak link for that to be impacting the whole supply chain and disrupt the supply chain. Uh, right now, uh, you've, you've heard so many incidents now, no industry is really safe from ransomware. Uh, whether you're in construction, manufacturing, finance, you name it, everybody has been impacted. And here's some of the data that shows uh, percentage uh, uh, impact. It's, it's on the rise. Uh, supply chain cyber risks is on the rise. And this is from Symantec uh, Cybersecurity Report back in 2019. I expect that number to be much, much higher now. Um, so, I'm going to show some of the big uh, impacts that we've heard of uh, next. For example, you've heard of the colonial pipeline uh, ransomware issue where it causes uh, the disruption, uh, supply chain disruption, price increase, uh, panic. 
uh, then there's also the salient attack that impacted universities and governments. Um, then there's also the solar wind. And if you notice that these are all attack, a lot of it attack on the supplier in the supply chain, right? So they get to the government through solar winds. Uh, they get to the universities to the Asilian. Uh, they get to PG&E through uh, uh, their third party contractor. They get to Facebook through two of their uh, technology vendor, which left a lot of their records wide open in AWS. AT&T through their insurance uh, vendor and, and Target through their HVAC vendor. So, you know, it doesn't matter what segment or what industry, industry you are, uh, you are in the supply chain of, uh, uh, of one or the other uh, in your, whether your supplier or the, uh, the client. Here's just a quick example. You hear so much about it, but this is a really good example of supply chain di disruption when all the consumers got panicked and uh, lined up to go get gas because gas stations uh, uh, worry about the shortages in supply uh, due to this uh, cyber attack. And now one quick note on this one is this, is this attack is caused by a lost password. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's as simple as a password from an employee working remotely. Uh, it can impact and take down the whole uh, pipeline. Uh, here's a, a quick example of Target where, I, as I mentioned, it's the HVAC vendor that, that lost the credential to the network. And the attacker basically just sat outside and wait and get be able to log into the Wi-Fi and get into a network and even more than they expected because there was a, the, the cybersecurity in the network was not enough and they were able to get through into all the servers and get to uh, all these data, a lot more than what they expected. Um, so for each of these, uh, I'm not gonna go through them in detail in this webinar, but uh, in the class that is coming up in September, we'll go and look at each of these attacks in a little more detail on how they come in and, and what kind of uh, impact it, it has. Uh, solo wind, and this, this is a very sophisticated attack um, through uh, software that a lot of uh, governments, uh, enterprises are using to manage their IT and data center. Um, we talk about the at and T one, um, and here here is a, a quick quickly a, a, an example of a third party contractor working for PG&E. They accidentally copy data from PG&E network to their own network, which is not protected, and that's how the the data got lost. So all of these are example of uh, supply chain impact. Uh, because of cyber attacks uh, into just one weak link, right? As I mentioned, just one, one weak link is all it takes to have to bring down a, 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 a huge uh, supply chain. Um, so I'm going to show next a quick kind of fun uh, video on uh, uh, be careful what you use as far as media, removable media or USB stick when it's what you find. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and start that. <sighs> Hello, what have we here? I wonder who dropped this little guy. Four terabytes? Wow, that's great. Okay. All right. All right, little fella. Let's see who you belong to. Okay. Looks 
like you belong to Sid now. Let's take you over there. So, uh, so let me continue and uh, and talk about why is uh, the cybercrime uh, uh, in so increases so much and and why is the attack is uh, exploding in in in, uh, in the last few years, last ten years. So as you can see in this uh, uh, report from FBI I three uh, IC three on complaints as well as the costs. The, the losses in financial loss, all the way from 2013 to 2017, we're looking at billion of losses uh, caused by cyber attack. And even just the complaint file has increased significantly. And this is only the one file. There's a lot of one, a lot of attacks that wasn't filed with FBI. So as you can see, this is this is not something that is. Uh, this is more than what you have heard of every day uh, on the attack. And cyber crime industry um, is expected to be $170 billion by 2022. This is why, this is why the cyber crime is, is, is so huge. Um, let, let me show you a little bit about why is it so lucrative. Here's a, a chart on in the cyber crime world, they actually have a price list on things that you can, they actually trade it with each other. So they can buy uh, cyber tools uh, from each other, do the attack. They can buy data from each other, as you can see in the red circle. Uh, and that's the price list for every PI information that uh, they want to buy. Uh, Social Security credit report, uh, and then on the bottom, uh, on the right, you can see services they can buy from each other to actually do the hacking, the 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 attack. So this is like a whole industry by itself that we're not aware of, but it's 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 for them it's just business as usual. Um, and let me show you also uh, the the shopping cart in dark web where a, a lot of the stolen credentials are being sold. I just put four example here. Look at the one in the red circle. The, the healthcare data, as I've shown, it, it's a lot higher. I mean, a lot, lot more expensive because it has the people's biometric in, information as well. This one where uh, Blue Cross Blue Seals lost 397,000 records, right? Patient records. And this is, this data is listed in uh, 607, 607 Bitcoin. Bitcoin, each Bitcoin is worth, is listed as $40,000, $46,000 I was looking at today. You, you multiply that, you're talking about 20, over $27 million worth of transaction. So this is why, that whole cyber crime industry is so huge. I have another chart which I won't share today. I don't get into it here, but in my class, I'll show you all the different example of uh, the, the, the way they are attacking and, and what are the tricky way they can come in and, and, and attack you. Uh, I don't have time for this webinar, but it's, it's just amazing. Um, what, what it looks like. And here, here's what an organized crime organization look like. They look just like uh, a regular organization you see in any other enterprise here, right? They have role for operation manager. They may have a few kind of uh, unique roles to the, uh, for hacking, but they have operation manager, they have uh, analysts, uh, but they actually have org chart, and this is how big they are. This was uh, shared by RSA in their conference in 2019. And the reason they grow so big is because they have more to target. 
more versa now on the internet, the traffic and transaction has exploded in the past uh, decade and past years. Uh, there are more of us doing uh, real business out there on the internet and more of us to be target. The record cost uh, of a stolen record, uh, healthcare obviously is the highest uh, cost and then it follows with financial and others. Um, so if you lose a million record, you can just multiply that and see how, how much that is uh, that costs uh, hospital or uh, healthcare uh, industry in the organization. And uh, so how, so here's the how, how do, how do the attacks happen? These are some of the different ways the attacks uh, happens. I don't, I'm not going into it in detail in this webinar, but in the class, we'll go into each of these example and what to look for and what to avoid uh, from some of these uh, w different ways of uh, cyber attack that can come, uh, come in and, and become a risk. The chart on the right show that uh, phishing email is the highest source of that cause ransomware. So be very careful what you click on. Uh, so I'll, I will go into that in more detail in the class as well on some best practices. Um, so the next I'm gonna share with you a video on how easy it is for them to attack a company. And the person doing it could be just be somebody sitting next to you at Starbucks looking like they're just doing their normal day job. Um, but pay attention to it. It kind of goes really fast. So pay attention to this next video. Uh, and it's just amazing uh, what you'll see here. So let me start that.
they're after us. They got inside. They got everything. Customer data, financials, everything. Walla Cards is reeling today from the news that hackers have released the personal information of nearly... The Nasdaq closed lower today, led by Walla Card, which was down 14% on news that their recent data breach may be far worse than the company originally stock fell to a new all-time low on news that CEO Mark Hannon is stepping down after what is turning out to be one of the worst breaches of personal information in recent history. Do you feel bad about releasing the personal information? All the financials? All the money that was lost? All I did was get the files. I'm not the one that decided to release them. I'm not the one that shorted the stock. Somebody else had their reasons for that. It's above my pay grade. I was paid to do a job, and I did it well. And that's what's expected of anyone, isn't it? Anyway, markets bounce back. So uh, uh, that's very interesting to see how how you know the cyber crime and cyber cyber uh, attack happen, um, and a lot of it are so already readily made uh, in 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 the cyber world uh, where they can just easily uh, uh, conduct an attack, right? Um, so what what kind of data do they are they interested in? Basically everything here. All these informations are the ones that uh, all these uh, hackers, attackers, uh, cyber criminals are interested in it. Sometimes they, they, are, they already even have a buyer for it before they even attack you. Uh, that's how, uh, how uh, serious it is. So um, I, I know that a lot of you and a lot of us deal with a lot of this kind of data. Um, here's a question for you. How many of you still email this information as all as an attachment? Uh, on a daily basis, when I, I work with a company, they just ask me to email my information, my application uh, to them. <laughs> I <It's like>, know <laughs> that this is like a, a, a primary way of them to be able to just get into your email. It's so easy for them to get into your email system and, and get to all this information. So if somebody asks you to do that, just say, no, there's got to be a better way I can send you the, the file. Um, now, the industry have tried now over the past decade or more to come up with ways to with requirements so that different companies in different supply chain would have to meet these certain uh, compliances. For example, in the federal state government that you, you will see a lot of the requirement around NIST, which is National Institute of Standards and uh, Technology. There are a number of publications there that are being used by the federal government, local governments. Uh, you'll see CMMC, and you'll hear more of, the, of CMMC coming up in the uh, next few years. Healthcare, you have to be HIPAA compliant, and I think I'm sure that by now everyone know what that is. Um, even though not all uh, uh, clinics, clinical offices are HIPAA compliant, um, they are supposed to be. Uh, entities that process credit card have to be PCI compliance. Data privacy. Data privacy applies to all businesses. Uh, that's why uh, you never want to ask people to send them their social security number on email. Uh, <laughs> there's a data privacy law that actually applies to that. So if a company has data breach, uh, they have to report into the, uh, the state. And there is actually a website where you can go see, and I'll share more in my class, where you can actually go see all the company that have been breached because they have to report to the, uh, to the, the attorney general website. FINRA is for uh, financial. And then a lot of the US company do working with uh, European uh, vendors, clients, doing business with a European company has to be GDPR, which is, a lot of it is privacy uh, uh, 
security and privacy uh, compliances, um, and so on. So these are all uh, the requirements that you might hear depending on which industry you are uh, on uh, cybersecurity that you have to uh, be comply with. So what, what, do, what to do? And I have a whole class designed to show a lot of the best practices, uh, the framework and what you need to do and, and, and the whole process. The, the way to summarize is, is to think about it. It's not just a one-time thing to implement cybersecurity. It's a process. It takes time. It takes to start from uh, doing small, uh, small pieces at a time, but you need to start now or yesterday. And you also need to develop a culture of security with your team. Everybody has to be more cautious about what they click on. And that's what I call the human firewall because you can put a lot of technologies in your, in your network. It's, it, all it takes is just that one click from your team member to bring something in. Um, everybody now in the industry are putting multi-layered security solutions. And obviously you need to do an assessment just to see where you are, uh, where your uh, environment or workplace is uh, to know what, the, what kind of gaps you have. Um, in, the, in, the, uh, in the federal environment, um, there's been a, a lot of uh, critical uh, executive order around cybersecurity, critical infrastructure, and, and cybersecurity framework started out to be developed and now have evolved and mature a little more. Um, the, a lot of the federal governments, local governments are starting to adopt NIST cybersecurity framework as a cybersecurity framework as a place to start with. Uh, and cybersecurity framework from NIST uh, have five elements to it. First one is to identify and then protect and being able to detect when something happened and being able to respond to it and recover. So NIST cybersecurity framework will have a lot of detail on, on each of these areas on what to do. And in the class that, uh, com that I have coming up in September, we'll go into uh, this in detail and there'll be a uh, a course, course class project around this as well. So it's so that the idea is that you'll be able to, when you leave that class, you have in-depth knowledge of what this cybersecurity framework is. So as I mentioned that uh, a lot of uh, industry has adopted this uh, cybersecurity framework uh, and a lot of requirement now, federal acquisition regulation that actually build around this, this framework. They may pick a few of the elements and uh, lighter weight, heavier weight, as you can see, all these four, uh, you will see them if you work with RFP, which is request for proposal from the government contracts, you will see a lot of these numbers uh, in there as a requirement uh, for you to meet by the time you get awarded. Uh, you may even have to, some of the, this that you might have to even show that you have met before you can even participate. The last one around cybersecurity maturity model, um, Department of Defense has been very methodical in trying to roll this out. So last year, 2020, they introduced the MMC uh, framework and, um, and it's a multi-year uh, effort to try to eventually make it into a requirement. So they're giving the contractors a lot of time from now till 2026 to be able to get to, to, uh, to compliance. Here's a little bit of the timeline. Um, so like I said, by 2026, all RFP coming out of the government, uh, especially defense, will have CMMC certification as a requirement. There are five levels of CMMC, uh, level one, level two, level three, depending on the maturity. 
uh, if you and depending on what kind of data you're dealing with, if you're working with CUI, which is control unclassified information, which is a lot of contractors do deal with that, you have to be at least CMMC level three uh, compliance. So, um, so I will actually go into this also in a little more detail on the framework and the requirement in the class. So um, you're asking why is that important? <clears throat> it's in, this is an area where I believe in the next five years, there's gonna be a lot of jobs that uh, a lot of opening around this area because CMMC body is going to start hiring and they're gonna start uh, certifying companies to be able to do assessment, company that can do implementation, company that can train. Uh, so I am now certified registered practitioner, which means that I can help company uh, prepare to be certified. So all of these are still at the very beginning of the timeline. So there'll be a lot of uh, uh, potential and opportunity to learn and, and, and get to be the expert in this area. Um, so why, do you, why should you learn about cybersecurity? It's, well, it's a huge industry, not just, not, not just in the cyber crime space, but also in response to the cyber crime, all enterprise, all big corporations, small corporations, government entities are spending and have to spend more money and invest in more cybersecurity uh, space whether it's resources, expertise, skill, or technologies. So this is uh, uh, an area that is predicted to be, uh, to have the spend of $1 trillion between in the last three years. Um, so this is why I think cybersecurity is such a, 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 an interesting, and it's gonna be a, a lot of, uh, opportunity uh, for people that wanted to grow professionally in this space. Um, so this uh, bring me to uh, talk to you a little more about uh, this course that are coming up uh, in September, which I'll be teaching. It's a seven weekly evening class and um, it's part of UCSC extension. And um, I will be, let me show you what is gonna be covered in those seven weeks. Um, you'll learn more, more detail around all the, uh, identifying all the different cyber threats and uh, uh, the compliant, industry compliance that the uh, regulation uh, that you, you have to meet. And we'll go into more detail on the NIST cybersecurity framework and there'll be a project actually doing assessment learning how do you assess uh, 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 in the NIST SB 800171, which is the most commonly required. I'm actually working on two NIST SB 800171 assessment right now, which require 110 controls in, in the cybersecurity uh, for your infrastructure. Uh, CMMC level three, has 130 controls. So if you start, if you already meet NIST SB 800 171, you just have to add 20 more controls and you can get certified for CMMC 3, uh, which is the, the, at the level where you are dealing with CUI, which is control unclassified information. Um, and then we'll talk about in the class on uh, supply chain risk management when it comes to cybersecurity. And then I will share a lot of best practices in my last 12 years of uh, my company working with suppliers, all different types of suppliers and managing their IT and implementing cybersecurity. I will be able to share some uh, real life uh, case studies uh, in the class. Everyone, thanks for coming. Thank you.